Alright, so here's my original function. We are going to make a bunch of vertical transformations, a bunch of stretches and shrinks. So the idea is that these are all vertical transformations because they're all affecting the y's. They're outside, they're not grouped in with the x. It's y is going to be three times what it was before. y is going to equal one half what it was before. y is going to be the negative of what it was before. So all of the vertical transformations are affecting the y values. And so when we're making our new points, all the x values are going to stay the same. So I'm going to keep my x values the same. And what I've already done here is I've written all the kind of key points that'll kind of help me guide my graph. So when I'm doing something with a vertical change, all the x values are going to stay the same. And then here, the y is three times what it used to be. So now it's going to be negative 6, 0, 6, and 3. And when I do that, I've got the point negative 4, negative 6. So this y value became three times what it used to be. The y value here was 0. It stayed at 0, so we've got negative 2, 0. 0, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so that y value became 3 times what it used to be. Uh, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3. I guess I could have done this point as well. That's going to be up there. So um, that's 4, 1, and it became 4, 3. And so you can do this without the table if, if uh, you're comfy with it, but the table might help at first. So now you just sort of connect your segments here to here rounding segment and the straight segment. So it got vertically stretched. When that value there, the absolute value of that, the just the number, don't look at positive versus negative, but when that number is bigger than one, it's going to stretch it. And guess what? When it's smaller than one, between zero and one, it's going to shrink it. So when we take all the y values and have them, it vertically uh, shrinks or compresses or hmm vertically widens, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but you'll see it. And uh, so, again, this is a vertical thing, so all the x values are going to stay the same, and we're just going to take half of all the y values. So half of negative 1, and negative 2 is negative 1, half of 0 is 0, half of 2 is 1, and half of 1 is a half. Beautiful. Multiply all the y values by a half. So, for negative 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, a half. This guy has the same y value, so that's nice to see. So we got this, this, and that. So it got vertically um, shrunk, right? It got vertically compressed. It got vertically widened. I don't know if I like that one, but you see all sorts of wordings in the book. Uh, for this last one, you might have uh, heard the idea that putting a negative in front will flip it over. Well, that's just a fancy case of this uh, vertical stretching. It's multiplying all the y values by a negative, right? So if we took all the y values, again, having to do with the y, so all the x's stay the same. So all the x's stay put, and all the y's become negative. So change the sign, change the sign, well, 0 to 0, negative 2, and a negative 1. So negative 4, positive 2 is up there, negative 2, 0, 0, negative 2, 2, negative 1, and this point here would have followed. So we've got this thing, and if you can see the original black graph in there, you can see that it flipped over. Well, flipping over is just a fancy way of saying multiply the y values by negative 1. So in summary, anything that's on the outside affects the y's just like it looks. I'm going to multiply the y values by 3. I'm going to multiply the y values by a half. I'm going to multiply the y values by a negative 1. In the next video, it's going to be grouped in with the x's, and it's going to affect the x's, and it's going to do the opposite of what you expect. When it's grouped in like that, you're going to have to undo it. So. Let's pause here and do some more.